Kevin Horlock. I'm one of the uh, senior product marketing managers, and I focus on the technical aspects around the supply chain management solution. Today, the aim of the session is to provide an insight into some of the key challenges we are seeing around supply chain, and then provide a sense of breadth for the solution where we'll then dive down into some of the areas around the technical unification elements, some of the technologies around the back office. Then I'll give you a short walk around the software so you get a sense as to what is the Dynamics 365 supply chain management solution. And then I look to bring it to a bit of a close around thinking of it from the, the composable architecture perspective. We have a, a great panel of experts online today, so please, as I'm talking, feel free to ask questions as we go. And at the very end, there'll be a, um, an evaluation form that I'd like to just call out if you could please you know, fill in the feedback form details and we can tune the information for next time. So let's kind of set a bit of a scene here and, and a bit of a background. You know, it's quite an interesting year, unfortunately. You know, the global economy is expected to shrink by uh, about $4 trillion with the current crisis, which is, uh, which, you know, is enormous compared to the recession in 2009. And this is also starting to force a bit of a shift around the um, demand and supply. And in order to navigate it and navigate this disruption, we need to just start thinking about the resilience of our supply chain as a whole, but also the software that is underpinning it. And you know, we have seen a bit of a trend around some of the top 25 com companies that are excelling around supply chain management. And they started to build out some teams of excellence to try and help them around key areas such as supply planning, procurement and logistics. And with that in mind, you know, we've started to take that information and bring it together in a way to try and understand how we can help with our solution. And it starts to get broken down into um, a number of uh, categories, if you like, you know, the how we can empower the end-to-end -end visibility of the supply chain solution, what the solution needs to provide in terms of addressing lack of agility, where demand changes, where sourcing of components or parts is disrupted. And then bearing in mind that we may not be the only solution on your IT infrastructure, we may need to interact with wider disparate solutions and some of them may be fairly fresh, some of them may be quite old and we need to consider that in terms of how we interact. And then from a platform on a, and especially on a global scale, how do we ensure the breadth of, of a business continuity? And so that, that's how we've started to break down these challenges to the to what we're facing in effect out there in the world. And our approach to a solution when it comes to this supply chain resiliency perspective is, is then broken down deeper into, well, how do we start to enhance the supply chain visibility? What does that in effect relate to? And this can be starting to think about areas like, how do we automate and streamline the supply chain management? How can we bring uh, insights, maybe predictive insights, that uh, you know can start to respond to your business's demands from an enhanced supply chain visibility lens. Then when I'm thinking about building agility around planning and distribution processes, you know, that's how, you know, how do we replan quickly and efficiently? And we want to be able to do master planning no longer as a an overnight batch process, but in as, in as near real-time process as we possibly can. And then we've got, you know, maximizing our assets, you know, the equipment that we may be very, very dependent upon. You know, how do we keep those costs minimized? How do we start to look at the overall equipment efficiencies? How do we maximize the long-term life of an asset through, you know, effective maintenance planning, which we're also then looking to be, you know, predicted in our maintenance as well. And then we've got our workforce and how do we deal with the optimizations of our workforce. And this isn't just about you know, making sure every individual is working as efficiently as possible. This is being, you know, providing empathy around the, the lens of, you know, we've got workers that now need to be, you know, working from home a lot or are, are stuck and distributed, which then has a bearing also in terms of how they interact with the system, but also 
training needs? How do we improve their productivity? How do we enable them through you know, uh, effective tools to enable them to do their roles if, uh, continuously? And so when we then start to break it down a little deeper around the supply chain capabilities, we have a bit of an end-to-end -end lens to this. You know, we've got how do we manage those individual SKUs, those items? You know, how do we manage change management? And this is where the product life cycle management lens starts to kick in, where we could be providing masters to different legal entities, to different dimensions to control the changes of an, of an item over a period of time. Through to how we might be looking at our demand planning, how we are sharing information, how we are replanning, how we are scheduling, um, how we are dealing with any disruptions in our shop floor experience. Through to the logistics aspects of you know, how we manage and monitor costs of items through to you know, finding the most effective, cost-effective route for shipping uh, our, you know, our end products to a, a number of drops on a route. And then some organizations need to be uh, adapting as well. You know, and so the solution itself can accommodate a mixed mode to manufacturing, but you might be just focused on process or discrete great, we know the capabilities are there within the solution to kind of help take you through that element. And then we've got the asset management lens where we can start to be thinking, not just in terms of processing and managing maintenance plans, but also starting to consider how sensor telemetry, sensor integration plays a key role for us. So on any, any machinery that has IoT telemetry in it, we can start to leverage that sort of information into the solution, both from a production planning perspective, but also for our asset management. So we can bring that information together. And then underpinning this is providing analytics across the solution that is appropriate for a role as well. So this is the end-to-end -end visibility of the supply chain solution. And then when I actually think about Microsoft and the broader ecosystem that is really in effect providing a supply chain resiliency, we've got quite a lot going on. And this slide is, you know, a very busy slide, but if we break it down, it's actually quite straightforward. If I look at the bottom element of the slide, the technology unification bar, and we'll drill into that in a bit more detail in a moment, is about, you know, the underpinning infrastructure that is providing control and governance to the back office capabilities spanning our solutions for e-commerce or the actual supply chain or how we manage might manage professional services and indeed human resources. And then we have the channels at the top about how we might be communicating out to an individual, whether it would be a vendor, a customer, or indeed an employee. There are a host of ways that we're now communicating through portals, e-commerce engines, web clients, mobile apps. And so with that in mind, let's start to drill a little deeper into the technology unification. I'm going to call out some of the kind of primary areas as we go. The solution itself addresses uh, clients from a web-based uh, scalable solution. You can be providing mobile clients. Some are available in the app stores, so, and, but there is also capabilities around power apps where you can have a citizen developer leverage our data and create an app that is specific to your own needs. We utilize the Azure Active Directory for user management, but on top of that, we also can provide role-based security that is pertinent to a procurement clerk, to an operations manager. They will both experience a different user um, set of information. And then underpinning that is automation, the data, how we might be integrating with something else, um, and so forth. But across all of this, the solution is also a global one. So it's important just to take a moment and kind of reflect on the fact that, you know, we are continuously uh, staying up to date and adjusting to meet the needs of certifications and accreditations that are on a global scale. And, you know, if you need to know more information around this, you know, please do pop into your browser and uh, search for Microsoft Trust Center and then look deeper for uh, dynamics, and then you will find all of our certification and accreditation details. Or if you are downloading this deck, it, it's in the URL underneath the word compliance. So we're keeping this in 
play always from a solution perspective, always looking to be compliant with the standards that you're listing about, that you're seeing above. And then when I look at it from a global lens also, you know, where can we provide and what type of cloud-based offerings are we actually talking about? Well, you know, Microsoft is fortunate enough to have, you know, a huge range of Azure data centers. And you can see the breadth of that on the right-hand side. And this is really pertinent for the, the global cloud scenario where we, we look to unlock the, the environments. And, you know, a global cloud is really thinking of it from the lens of a, a hyperscale cloud service. You know, we've got multiple geo-addressing going on here with specific data, data residency. And, of course, there'll be compliance reports compliance requirements across all of those. And then we can go to a, a, a go local cloud, as we refer to it, which is you know a set of data centers within a, um, a country border with latency defined boundaries for synchronous, uh, synchronous replication of customer data for topics like disaster recovery. And this can be pertinent for countries like uh, France or India. And then, of course, there are sovereign cloud scenarios where, you know, the environment needs to be isolated from the global cloud service, deployed into a local data center, meeting specific requirements to that market or region. And China or a governmental department is great examples of that. And when we think about how we actually go through the motions of deployment, there, there is um, a an infrastructure that underpins it. And we refer to this as Dynamics Lifecycle Services. And this is an area which not only manages your environment that you're using as your production instance, but it's also providing support for additional sandboxes. And the sandboxes could be leveraged for uh, testing, user acceptance testing, any customizations you're doing. And everything around this and around these sandboxes and your production instance, you know, there's totally secured through a project um, and everything is um, look to guarantee a continuous uptime of, you know, 99.9%. And again, this is available online for you to look more deeply if, if appropriate. But this doesn't cover just the scenario of just having supply chain management solely in the cloud. There are going to be scenarios which we need to go to a bit of a, an intelligent edge lens to that as well. And this is where we have variants around a, a cloud scale or an edge scale adding approach. And this can help organizations that say, for instance, you know, you have a factory in an area that is having a lot of disruption on their internet connectivity. There might be issues around network latency. They might be experiencing a high percentage of timeout requests. You know, that can have a direct bearing on uh, productivity, both in terms of the business, but also individuals. And so, you know, you will be in a position to start modeling and simulating. What would it mean if I was to apply a cloud or an edge scale unit locally to an area or to a plant? And by doing that, you're able to keeping that plant optimized to keep uh, a particular type of workload, whether it relates to manufacturing or, or warehousing, keeping those optimized without any disruption because of interruptions to the wider network traffic issues. So although it's a cloud offering, there are options which we can expand a little bit further locally to help uh, keep everything in an optimized format. And synchronized up as well. And when I think about it from a synchronized up lens, I'm thinking about how we can help unify data and the processes across your organization. And this is just one particular aspect. You know, there is the power platform that sits alongside Dynamics 365 and especially supply chain management. We provide uh, all of our virtual entities and we have a capability known as dual rights, which enables performance activities for a host of scenarios in conjunction with something known as the common data service. So if the common data service is underpinning all of your applications, we can interact with that in a near real-time basis. And by having your data in one location, you can start to unify your data and your processes across your organization, especially when it comes to supply chain management. So, you know, if you have a safety stock issue, if you have, you know, an inventory on hand level, or you need an approval done, then you can start to leverage capabilities across the broader portfolio of areas like 
um, a power automate and drive a um, automation that actions off the back of a business event within the solution, such as a, an approval of a procurement request. And the data itself is, is there and secure, and there's a whole host of government and security elements that go with that. But there's also how we can provide access across the broader portfolio as well in terms of Microsoft 365. And this is a great example of where Excel plays a key role for us in various parts. And I always like to think about it from the uh, supply demand forecast lens where you know you could actually provide a spreadsheet to some vendors if it was appropriate, uh, some key ones where you have some fast moving items, they could populate that spreadsheet with some um, on hand inventory that they have. And you can use that spreadsheet as part of your master planning and your demand forecasting to ensure that you're, you know, when you're looking to fulfill the demand of customer orders, you're taking into the equation the stock holding of your supply chain as well. And the actual Excel spreadsheet integration is such that it's a two-way and it provides validation as well. So, you know, if you try to put in a, a key field such as a main account or an item number, it's going to validate those for you and not assume that you're going to type it in correctly. And you can share that in a two-way form. So across this portfolio, I've touched on some of the kind of the more pertinent interactive data elements. But if I come up a level a little bit around the ecosystem and start to think about the, the breadth of the solution in terms of you know, the back office aspects, there is, you know, there's a host of areas and functional areas that we could touch in on. But what I want to try and draw out is the fact that you know, we are having to provide this resilient approach. So that has to also be driven from better decision making. And I wanted to just touch on the analytic elements here as well, because Power BI, the business intelligence tool, is embedded directly within uh, supply chain management. So when I'm looking at a workspace, or which is predominantly the, the route most individuals work through the solution, a Power BI dashboard is available, and it's in con available in context of a particular role as well. So I can then drive the insights to the right people. And when the solution provides a host of example templates uh, that could be perfectly adequate for your needs, but as a custom um, or citizen developer, you can customize those reports or replace them with your own leveraging data from within supply chain management, but not forgetting what I was touching on earlier about the CDS. So you can bring data across from other applications in your portfolio, along with any, um, uh, just not just necessarily transactional data, but data that goes broader than that from um, uh, information from telemetry from an IoT sensor as well, as an example. And then there's also the breadth about the interactions that we need to consider as well. And this is very pertinent when we think about it from being agile, being a visual, a visible supply chain solution. And there's a, um, an, an add-in service now for uh, infantry visibility, which you can leverage um, across your own portfolio, but it might also be appropriate to share with some uh, key vendors or key customers as well. And this is a, a service that is you know, intended to be hyperscale, that is a, a range of uh, um, access to inventory on hand information through to infantry reservations and allocations that you can be leveraged through RESTful APIs. So it gives you that additional level of scope to interact across the breadth of your wider supply chain and add in that extra layer of agility when it comes to your planning and distribution needs. But we've also got the workforce to consider in, in the breadth of this resiliency as well. And this is where I want to just touch on how Dynamics 365 guides can play a key role. You know, remembering, you know, a lot of us are having to work from home. We are maybe uh, limited in terms of available staff in our plants at times. So guides can help 
enhance our training experiences. It can enhance the experience around a machine operator who, you know, may be a little bit unfamiliar because he's covering for another colleague. He has the opportunity and we have to change the, the settings or the calibration of the machine for the next uh, production job. If they're unfamiliar, they can just use the uh, production floor execution user experience, click the guides button, and then pop on the help holo lens and using a QR code, follow a guided experience that will take them through how to change or reconfigure the machine for the next production job. And it could also be appropriate for you know use cases around um, um, asset management when you know you've got a, a, a an engineer that may be not familiar with a task changing out a filter, changing a part on a machine that needs replacement as part of a maintenance schedule, you have those sort of opportunities to go through that sort of lens. And guys can play a key role for that. And so throughout this, you know, I've kind of looked at the technology evocation. We've got the back office elements. And we've also got the, the breadth of how we can interact with the solution as well, whether it be through digital engagements, through collaboration port portals to manage bidding or vendor bidding information with you know, a selection of partners or how you might be transacting electronically across your supply chain, or you may be just punching out to an external catalog um, as part of your procurement process for some urgent items, uh, maybe safety goggles comes to mind. And if it was appropriate, you could also start to create your own portal. So there's a host of ways that the digital engagement can go that much further than just the web-based user experience, which is a rich experience as well. And so what I want to actually do is kind of pause a moment and just give you a sense of the software. So I'm going to switch and go into a demonstration now for you. Okay, so the aim of the demonstration is to give a little bit of a flavor around some of the resiliency capabilities and the connected capabilities of the solution. Here I'm looking at my default dashboard with a range of workspaces that are pertinent to my role. Any of these workspaces we can click into, such as the sales order processing workspace, and start to explore and navigate any particular types of transactions that are relevant. Sales orders can come inbound from a number of sources, whether they be uh, from an e-commerce site or from order entry solutions. And any order in terms, we can focus into and explore appropriately and, and navigate to we needed to. But in this instance, I just want to give a breadth of some of the solutions. So we've got sales orders. We need to be able to perhaps start to manage and produce some items. And what we can do from a production perspective is connect perhaps some IoT sensors on some machinery to particular scenarios, such as production delays through to equipment downtime. And we can connect those across to business processes to help individuals with in the organization, whether those individuals be perhaps the shop floor manager who's monitoring production and the individual production work orders and could be focusing in and navigating across to see any notifications that might surface up from a particular machine, such as a cooling line has stopped producing. He can then see some time series information, explore, and maybe take this machine out of circulation by perhaps reassigning um, the uh, work to another machine in the shop floor. At the same time, we could also automate the generation of a maintenance request to send a maintenance engineer to go and explore. And so from a maintenance manager's perspective, we can also be driving some analytics to explore and drive some insights around what is happening with our equipment to keep everything as proactively up and working to its, its optimum level as we can. And so here I'm bringing up a Power BI dashboard that has been embedded within the solution and is driving some insights to me as a maintenance uh, manager. And I can see that Sharon uh, is spending a lot of time on cooling lines. So we know we need to put some more energy into managing and maybe changing the maintenance schedules around that. But from this connected perspective, it, it's, you know, we've looked at it from a, a production manager, a maintenance manager, but we can also provide telemetry across to a local uh, machine operator as well. So if I was to log in, so the view of a machine operator is quite different. It's intended really to be on a device that is hardened in the shop floor. So you can see some very large icons, which are in effect button controls. So as a machine operator, from the IoT perspective, I can look across and get some telemetry. I can have some cameras potentially monitoring 
entering uh, a view, and I can see the overall equipment effectiveness as well. And if I needed to go and source some additional materials in relation to fulfilling a production order, I could use the inventory visibility capabilities to quickly go and ex explore, identify where our on-hand stock is, and represent that information to uh, the operator as required. So in this case, I'm giving you an indicator in terms of our local warehouse where my stock is. Returning to the primary user experience, I've also got the wider capabilities here around uh, helping any disruption in our supply chain. So we can be enabling vendors to be utilizing a vendor collaboration portal, and we can be also then monitoring how our vendors are performing against our expectations. And again, we can leverage Power BI to give us that sort of insight about how are they performing against their contract, the delivery of the services, and are there any kind of key influences that determine why maybe invoicing is late or there are issues with products. And that can help drive a better insight around our vendors as a whole. And of course, in terms of the data, you know, earlier we touched on our maintenance requests. The data that's within supply chain management is also visible to the uh, common data service. So if I switch views and look at the common data service briefly, through the lens of the Power App platform, I've got the Power App platform in front of us here, and we've got our entities in effect being exposed through. And so I can, if needed, I can interact with the data through the dual right and the virtual entity capabilities that exist for supply chain management. And from these entities, I can go and explore, and if I needed to, I can focus in on a particular entity, such as our maintenance request assets, and I can see any identifiable business rules, views that may be defined, and if I needed to, I've got a little bit of sample data in here that I could drill through and see the data from a developer's perspective if I am creating a Power Automate or a Power App experience. So I hope you found that demonstration informative. So just to kind of bring us to a little bit of a close here, we've got the solution across the breadth of how do we deploy, and it is uniquely composable. You can start your journey with the solution in a number of different ways. You know, asset management is a great example of this, where, you know, it can be uh, an acceleration to how you can apply this solution alongside some of your existing IT infrastructure. So asset management, you know, you can digitize your maintenance programs. You can then go further with cognitive technologies, introduce preventative and predictive maintenance into your solution. Or you could go further again and start integrating with field service and ensure geographically dispersed assets are in play. But the, the underpinning piece is it's uniquely composable. And you can take it into a number of levels as well where you're thinking about how you might leverage uh, automation to insights through the Power BI, Power Apps and Power Automate tools and how we can help you through our fast track services around training libraries, test plans, solution architects and the business processes that go with that. And all of this is kind of leading to a composable architecture that has a range of um, you know, advantages, and two of which we're just touching in on here around how we can address smart maintenance by leveraging guides, experience, and conjunction with supply chain, and calling upon a, any IoT telemetry through to thinking of the future. You know, how do we drive insights and guidance and remote assistance to? And all of this is looking to try and drive that acceleration across the board. Thank you for listening. Um, what I'd like to do is just kind of call out around some next actions as part of the Ignite event. You know, please do check online for your certification journey, continue building your skills, that's so valuable. Um, but also kind of connect with your peers and you know, look across the community as a whole. Right at the very beginning, I did touch on the, uh, you know, return evaluation form. So please do um, fill in your survey, uh, give me some guidance about how I can tune my content for next time. Thank you for listening.